So this is going to be the game plan to make money trading the SPY both ways heading into tomorrow. I'm going to walk you through the key levels of interest where I'm planning to buy put options to make money as the market's dropping and where I'm planning to buy call options to make market as the market is rising. With that being said, I'm going to break this down to you step by step. I'm going to show you exactly what it is that I'm looking at in the new key levels of interest that I'm planning to trade at heading into tomorrow. So in terms of the daily charts, this is what I want to bring some awareness to. We have this green bullish pin right here, and we are approaching all time highs. One thing you need to understand about a recent trend, whenever we've been hitting new all time highs for the short term recently, the SPY has been having very nice bull traps. It's been having very nice sell offs, very nice drops. And in terms of measuring the move, it's been tending to happen when the SPY breaks two points above the all time highs. And if you check back throughout the pre market extended hours, trading hours, right? You're going to see the all time highs are at 575. So the first level of interest for put options heading into this week is going to be 577, measuring that overall move and using recent short term history. Make sure you are using red bearish or trend reversal 30 minute candlestick confirmations at that 577 level if the spy ends up approaching that level. Now, in terms of the daily chart, what I want you to do is I want you to take a look at this candlestick right here. This daily candlestick looks very similar to this daily candlestick. It also looks very similar to this daily candlestick, right? So in terms of what ended up happening towards similar levels when SPY formed this daily candlestick, on this day, it ended up having a very nice drop in the morning, and then it recovered bullish. In terms of this day, it ended up topping out towards the previous day highs and ended up closing bearish, but then the next day it spiked higher. So um, one thing that I want you to bring aware that I want you to have awareness to in terms of the market heading tomorrow, right? We've been selling off towards all time highs in terms of the, you know, when we get new, new all time highs, it tends to be a good opportunity to scout puts two points above the new all time highs, right? So keep that in mind. But um, based off this daily candlestick pattern, heading into tomorrow, there's likely going to be a very good opportunity to buy put options. Now, in terms of buying those put options, is likely going to be early in the morning or in the middle of the day. So I want you to look at pre-market resistance, right? See if there's any major resistance at the pre-market. But um, based off of these two daily you know, candlestick patterns, the SPY sold off at some point you know, in the morning to the middle of the day. It sold off towards that previous day high, towards that previous day highs, right? So um, the SPY right now is literally filling the gap. There's a gap to fill at 573.75. We're at very strong major resistance approaching these all-time highs. So I'm telling you, man, heading into tomorrow, look at 573.75, look at, five, look at 573.75, and look at 572.60. That is going to be our first put zone. If you are seeing the SPY react bearish in between this zone, you should be all over puts. If it's happening early in the morning or if it's happening in the middle of the day, you should be buying put options. It's likely going to drop. So just look at the recent bull traps from this level. When it tops at 570, um, right here, 573.46, and then we have the gap that's waiting to fill above, nearly filled, right, at um, 500 and, you know, 73.76 is likely going to have a gap reversal. Based off the daily chart pattern, it could potentially go higher first, but I'm telling you, if you're seeing bearish reactions at 577, try the puts. It, right? If you're not seeing bearish reactions in between the zone, then hold up on the puts, wait till 577. But once you see bearish reactions, right, whether the market went higher or if it's just staying around this level, if you are seeing bearish confirmations, bearish reactions at this 573.76, to 573.30, and then for the make or break level, really under um, 572.30, the SPY is going to have a massive pullback, man. When it reacts as a resistance right here at 573.40, it sells off very hard to 566.60. And then you can see right here, once we start to crack 572.30, it drops very, very quickly to 568, right? And we have a gap that is waiting to fill below at 567.82. So if 574 reacting as a resistance and then the key make or break support level for the bears to take full control, 572.30 needs to crack. You see 572.30 crack, breaks down, spikes back up, reacts as a resistance level. You're going to want to buy put options, ride this down to fill the gap 
Take profits along the way. Step profit stops. Do not go green to red. Secure your profits and protect your gains by moving your prop stop, profit stop up within your favor. That's going to be that ultimate game plan for puts. And like I said, if you're not seeing any bearish confirmations in between that zone, sit on the sidelines, wait for bearish confirmations to hit on the zone, or wait for a bearish confirmation at 577. That is the game plan for puts. There is no fucking game plan for calls at the higher levels in terms of making this video is mainly just me telling you to sit on the sidelines in terms of the call side right obviously if 574 is reacting as support then we're going to be on pace to hit new all-time highs to 577 right i just don't encourage people to be buying call options at these high overbought resistance levels but make sure that you are not just blindly trading levels that you have some sort of foundation i gave you the foundation in terms of how i came up with the levels but you're using confirmations at these overall levels right it's going to work best when you use the confirmations, right? You have to react properly. You can't just sit here and say that the market's going to crash at 574 without a strong foundation. Even if you have the strong foundation, you need the proper confirmations, the proper strategies to be using at this along with, you know, trading with your heart, trading with intuition. So that's the overall game plan for put options. Now, in terms of call options, I'm extremely interested in buying call options, man. The market is going to likely be setting up for an overall bullish potential move once we get the first nice drop into the week. So if we're seeing a crazy drop heading into tomorrow, it's likely going to be a good opportunity to even potentially swing trade calls, but I'm going to be very interested in buying call options at the first level. The, the first levels are going to be the following. 567.82, this is going to be the gap. Look for a gap reversal. What I dislike about it is it already reversed, nearly filling the gap. It reversed at the previous resistance right here that was not tested to react to support, right? So um, keep an eye on 567.82, but it's not the best level. So if the SPY is not reacting bullish at that level, the next level is going to be 565. This is make or break, and this is not the best level. The true best levels to be dip buying call options are going to be 563 in the gap that is waiting to fill below at 561.40. This is going to be your lower oversold gap for a reversal. The 567.82 is a make or break gap in the middle. The gap at 573.90 is the highest gap to fill above. In terms of stocks having gap reversals, one confirmation you can use is. When it when it hits the highest gap that's waiting to fill above towards you know towards um all-time highs that tends to be one of the best gaps to play for a reversal to go short to buy put options but you have to use the confirmations again that's just a foundation to lay out the overall trade right but you want to use confirmations at the levels use the 30-minute chart so that's the overall game plan man right now we're towards the upper levels of resistance we're looking for put option opportunities towards that 572.30 bears crack that full control very nice drop in order to happen until then 574 is make or break resistance if we go above that we're going to 577 like i said for the bears to take full fucking control we need a drop under 572 if not 574 is make or break resistance above that 577 wait for the proper confirmations wait for the 30 minute chart to develop to get in on these overall levels that is going to be the overall game plan man in terms of friday we had um, many phenomenal, you know, trading opportunities and trading setups, man. You can see right here, um, I tell you guys this all the time, when the SPY, when it has a nice gap up, you can see right here, it ended up um, having a very, very nice gap up. Once it drops back down to fill the gap or when it touches that previous resistance right here, previous resistance was never tested. This is where it gapped up from on the 30 minute chart. It turned that previous resistance into support. And I tell you all the time on this channel, when there's a key level of interest to be buying call options, Two hours is like the ultimate reversal time frame. If it's sitting at previous resistance to react to support right here, this is resistance. The spy had a breakout. The spy had a gap up. The spy had a gap and fucking go. Then it came crashing back to fill the fucking gap below, right? So if it drops back down, the breakout and retest, the gap and go and retest to come crashing back down to fill this gap. If it's sitting at the previous resistance, if it's sitting towards the gap for two fucking hours, that's the perfect time frame to be buying call options on the next 30 minute candlestick, right? And then you also have the green, red, green bullish pattern, right? And then throughout the day, green, red, green bullish pattern, previous resistance right here towards the closing of these candles is now the new highs, new support is going to try to keep on spiking to retest the high of these wicks, man. You should have been all over that strategy. On Friday, you should have been saying the SPY gapped up. 
If it comes crashing back down to fill the gap, if it comes crashing back down to hit this previous um, resistance right here on this 30 minute chart, it could react to support. If we're seeing the green, red, green pattern, if the spy is sitting for me in all these bottom wicks, bottom wicks, bottom wicks, bottom wicks for two fucking hours, well, it's likely going to bounce. It's likely going to start to reverse. It's likely going to retest the high of this wick, the high of this wick, right? And then right here, spy is forming higher support, higher support, higher support, higher support, higher support, two and a half fucking hours. Well, what did it do when it formed support for two hours down here? It started to spike. Well, two and a half fucking hours. Green, red, green. Green, red, green. Starts to spike. Starts to spike. Highly predictable if you use what it is that I'm teaching you. Everyone should have been green on overall Friday, man. Now, for those of you who are serious about trading a long side with us, it's going to be the first link down below within the description. You can gain access to our community, our secured private organization. You'll also gain access to a zero date options trade alert system. In terms of some background to the zero date options trade alert system that we've created, it's very simple. We are known for buying cheap, far, low risk out of money option contracts. We tend to go far out, three to five strikes out. In terms of what we do is we're known for selling deep in the money for the biggest percentage gains within the market. And we have the highest win rate in the game doing this above 90%. With that being said, in terms of some background to the trading alert system that we've created, is very, very simple. We don't use stop losses. There is no need to use a stop loss. If the contracts are so cheap, so low barrier to entry, that means you can put in your max risk per trade into the entire value of the contracts. Meaning if the contracts expire worthless, they go to zero, the trade doesn't work out, the most you can lose is your max risk per trade. Therefore, we don't need a stop loss. In my experience, 70% of the times, the dead plays that we enter that drop 50% or down 50% on a trade, they tend to come back to life, which is another reason to not use a stop loss because the trade can come back to life if you hold it and you could sell in the money for potential profit later on throughout the day, right? And another reason why we just don't like using stop losses is I prefer to see how the stock reacts at the specific level levels rather than just exiting right away at the level at times we will sell the moves for a loss if we're down like 30 40 50 percent but at other times we'll look to just hold the trade and let it expire worthless right we'll look to just let the dead play play out in a sense right it depends on this it depends on the overall situation right but like i said since you could put in your max risk per trade you do not need a stop loss so we've removed the stop loss and we put you in a situation where you can hold these contracts throughout the entire day and you can potentially sell them in the money for a profit, right? So it has a huge advantage to not using the stop loss. You get to see how the stock reacts at a level, deciding if you wanna sell or not at that reaction. And you also can hold and sell it in the money for gains potentially later if it goes into money, right? So there's big advantages to trading options when you're not using stop losses. It gives you plenty of time to hold throughout the day. And um, with that being said, we are known for quickly adding to winners. So when we're up a little bit for us, you know, very small win is like 5, 10, 15, 20%. Very small percentage gains over here with the options we're trading at, right? So um, when we're up a little bit, we like to add to winners. Adding to winners is going to increase the winning. And when we tend to win, the winning tends to go in our favor and we tend to win big. So if we're up a little bit on a trade and we're getting a winning confirmation, we like to add in the green side because that tends to work versus adding into a loser and averaging our cost down. I'd rather average my cost up a little bit in a sense at times. And then from there, you can set a profit stop. Setting a profit stop is going to ensure that you do not go green to red on an overall trade. Once we set the profit stop, we move the profit stop up. As the trade is going up and working in our favor, we move the profit stop up to ensure that if the market is going to have a big move against us and we're not selling into the moves, or even if we're just holding runners, that we're going to get stopped out for the bulk of the profits, right? Because that's the goal, man. If we're up a lot on a trade, we don't want to be in a situation where we just leave our profit stop at a very low level and get back the bulk of our gains. No, we want to move that profit stop up to ensure if a big move turns against us, we get stopped out for profit and not for fucking losses, man. So we're doing everything differently over here. If you'd like to gain access to our secured private organization, it's going to be the first link down below within the description. You can start trading alongside with us heading into the market open tomorrow.